So my cumulative GPA and then my DAT scores. So I applied to 12 schools. My hours was 586. Pre-December interviews at acceptance day is December 1st. Hey everyone, so this is gonna be a super quick video. I got some requests from you all to just do a video documenting the schools I applied to, my stats when I applied, and then the results of my application cycle. So I applied back in June of 2019 and started dental school in June of 2020. I also just want to preface that this isn't to say that stats are everything, that if you have these stats you'll have the exact same application cycle results because obviously that's not true. This is just to give people that are maybe early on in their pre-dental journey an idea of where I was at. I'm going to talk about my GPAs, my DAT scores, my shadowing hours, volunteer hours, work hours, research hours, each of the schools I applied to, and then whether I was interviewed, accepted, denied, all of that. So I did do some pre-work for this and pulled up my old application from the 2019-2020 cycle and wrote down all of these stats just to make sure that they were as accurate as possible. One other thing to preface, and then I'll get into my GPAs, is that these are my GPAs from the time I submitted my application, June of 2021. So that meant it was all of my classes up until then. And when I graduated undergrad, so after all my senior year classes, my GPA went down to around a 3.84, but that was after I had already been accepted into dental school. So these are the stats that the dental schools were considering when they were deciding whether they wanted to interview me and eventually accept me. So my cumulative GPA was a 3.91, cumulative undergraduate with out plus or minuses. I don't know which one the dental schools look at. So cumulative undergraduate without plus or minus was 3.97. Science GPA, including plus or minus, was 3.89. My BCP, which is your biology, chemistry, physics, was 3.83. My non-science was 3.95. And then my DAT scores is the next kind of stats that people asked for me to share. So I had a 22 academic average with a 20 in the sciences and a 21 PAT. My reading was a 28. Biology and general chemistry were both 19s. And then organic chemistry was a 23. And my math quantitative reasoning was a 20. So looking at shadowing hours, I had 50 shadowing hours with one general dentist that I had write my letters of recommendation. And then I had 110 hours at an oral surgeon office where I worked. So I divided those hours you'll see between working and shadowing. And then I also had 40 from high school that I put on there. So that doesn't count towards my total, which was about 160. I just put them in there to show them that I had early interest in the field, even though they wouldn't be counted for my requirements for admission. Next thing is volunteer hours. So I had a total of 232 hours that broke down between 76 coming from various places, food banks, Mission of Mercy, just random events or things that I went to for a shorter amount. And then 40 of those came from a medical service trip I did to the Dominican Republic with a club at Michigan State, our chapter of AED, Alpha Epsilon Delta. And then I did 116 of those hours came from mentoring through another organization at Michigan State called Honors Times Two. We went in and mentored elementary students one specific student and me every single week for an entire academic year and then I did that sophomore, junior, and senior year so I had three students throughout the total time. Extracurricularly, my hours for clubs and leadership was 586. So I was involved in AED like I said, I was involved in pre-dental club. Those were my main things and those took up a lot of hours because I was general members but then I also had leadership positions and I was doing a lot of things. And again, this is over the course of the three years before I applied. So I worked as a tour guide for 120 hours one summer and then I also worked with the oral surgeon as I mentioned for 110 hours a different summer. Research, I had only 60 hours of research because I researched for a summer semester and then a few weeks into the fall semester because it wasn't for me so I ended up leaving that position but I did have 60 hours by the time I finished. Now we can transition into the schools that I applied to and what the results were of that application cycle. So I applied to 12 schools. As for out of state, I applied to Ohio State, UNC, Pitt, Penn, Tufts, Boston, Marquette, Louisville, Midwestern Illinois, and Colorado. 
I was primarily applying to schools Midwest, East Coast, because I didn't want to go too far from my home in Michigan, and that meant I also applied to the two in-state schools, which were Detroit Mercy and University of Michigan. So the results of that application cycle, I was offered pre-December interviews at five schools, and those five were an interview with Detroit Mercy at the end of August, I interviewed at Michigan in early September, I believe it was their first date of interviews. I interviewed at Ohio State at the end of September, and then my interviews at Tufts and Pitt I believe were in early November, but I couldn't find them in my calendar to verify. I believe they both were though because I had a family member pass away, and I remember I had to push the Pittsburgh interview back after the funeral and everything, so I think they both were like early and mid-November. And as you know, Acceptance Day is December 1st, or the first Monday in December, and I was lucky to receive acceptances to four of those five schools that interviewed me. So I was accepted to Ohio State, Detroit Mercy, Tufts, and University of Michigan, which you can tell by my shirt, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I was so excited that University of Michigan was my top choice and I accepted my offer the next day, which meant that I declined my offers to the other four schools. Pittsburgh, the other one that I interviewed at, gave me a waitlist offer and I declined that because I did choose to go to University of Michigan. And ultimately, that meant that all of my other applications weren't valid, if you will, because I knew I wouldn't go to any of those schools. So I didn't hear back from any of the other schools that I applied to other than eventually like a denial or an email. Do you want us to consider your application still? And I just emailed back, no thank you. So that's a really quick snapshot of my stats. And again, I have a lot of videos showing acceptance day. I have videos showing my top pre-dental experiences and talking about why I think they're great and other ideas for you all. I really think that applicants get in because of their experiences and because of their personalities more than just statistics. So those are videos that I really recommend that you check out to get ideas of things that you can be involved in or things that you might be passionate about that can make your application stand out and make you more prepared for dental school. So with all that being said, I want to thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.